Hey guys, so um, I thought about making a little video about texturing mesh using Substance Painter and Photoshop and we will be working in Speed Life in local local mode so you don't have to upload textures immediately you can just uh, look at them yourself it's usually when you see somebody else has uh, some great textures on them and they see it but you don't that means that they are working, working in local uh, I created this little dress. It's for level on first. Uh, yeah, first, first of May. Um, it's uh, made on. It has uh, two uh, faces, right? Uh, blue one is the front and with uh, the buttons, and the back one, back face, is uh, a back of the dress with the sleeve. So I have uh, two UVs actually. And uh, I will get the second second um, sleeve. I'll just uh, copy it and mirror it when I get to the rigging part. Uh, I have the high poly model of this dress as well, and we will be going to Substance Painter to create the textures. I just skinned it um, so I can import it into Second Life to mess about with it. It's just. Uh, transferred weights. I didn't uh, uh, blend any weights, so it's it's not a good rig. It's just for me to look at it. Okay, so let's go into Substance Painter, go under File, New, and select your mesh. I exported from uh, 3ds Max as FBX file, uh, because um, when I export it as OBJ, sometimes the um, UVs uh, stay on top of each other FBX is better and it's usually faster for exporting and importing into Max so let's take it okay uh, so I've set uh, three faces here the buttons are the, on, on their own map because uh, when I start to put when I put high poly model on it, sometimes they can bake oddly together. It will bake uh, the button texture onto the front texture and I don't like it. So I will just... Uh, let's edit the names. Let's call this front. Back. Buttons. When I'm done with the Substance Painter, I'll just import it into Photoshop and glue them together. Okay, let's first start baking. So um, I'll just cover I don't know, some basics. Uh, like this is your 3D window, right? Uh, you can just uh, with the right click and uh, Alt zoom in and out. With Shift and right click, you can. Um, uh, change the light how it uh, falls. It, it just it uh, light in substance just go from late left to right. And with uh, left click and Alt you can rotate it to check it out. And this is of course your two D window. This uh, if I just uh, want uh, this is this is the texture that you will actually get in Second Life, not this. In Substance Painter it looks much better because they have different engine, engine of course in Second Life and much more maps and much more uh, options um, so in Second Life you have just th uh, three slots <laughs> you have three slots to use your textures as you know texture bump map and the shyness map so you kind of have to uh, use the most of out, out of those, out those, uh, out of those three you can't really have like um, specularity and roughness on separate maps you have to put them together to get uh, like the shining effect or something like that S so uh, although you can look in 3d a window know that this will be the actual result that you will be baking out if you want them to be the same uh, you can use a uh, filter filter this bake light, light, uh, bake light filter, uh, bake lighting environment, and bake lighting styled, 
and it will show you in both windows how it will look but the materials and the lightning, the lighting will change um, I don't really use them I use the I just tend to look at this one and I know I will be fi fixing everything uh, at the end in Photoshop a bit more so I don't really stress about it here you have a texture set list of course as you already uh, uh, noticed it's the actual maps uh, this is the layer set uh, as you can see um, Substance uh, really looks a lot of has a lot of Photoshop op options. So if you've been using Photoshop, uh, you will be it will be easy for you to use uh, uh, Substance as well. I think it's the, the same company made Substance as well. So they also have uh, a layer options, and you can use the uh, black and white maps to hide or unhide parts that you want. Um, honestly, I tend to create the first light. Sometimes I will put pat patterns in in substance as well and mess about more in substance. But a lot of times I just uh, go to uh, ex export the textures into Photoshop and finish them there. I just tend to create the one color in substance and then go to Photoshop. So uh, to create. Um, uh, <laughs> materials to create textures. First, we need to bake our high poly, uh, high poly information onto our low poly. We go that under texture set, uh, texture set settings, okay, and we scroll down. Bake mesh maps. Uh, this is how big of the size you want them to be. I usually tend to put to 2048. Uh, keep in mind that in Second Life you will be importing uh, 1000 times 24, but it's good to. Uh, I will have big, larger ones and scale them down in Photoshop before uploading them into Second Life. This here is where you add your high definition mesh. My high definition mesh is like something so high. Uh, I will put uh, empty placing. This is like kind of a smoothing effect a little bit of bleeding uh, to the texture I'll put it at high top because my some of my um, uh, lines that I created are a bit um, crispier so I want them to be a little bit uh, softer it will take a bit long, longer time than if you just don't put it you can try all of them with uh, I usually put on 2 times 2 I'll put Four times four now, and after that you can click. Uh, ba I will bake all of the textures, but I will have to bake separately the buttons because there are a different mesh. But everything else, my dress and my sleeve, I have that as a one item, one mesh as high poly mesh. This one that I, that's here that I exported from ZBrush.
Okay, so the textures are now picked and except the buttons because they are literally a different mesh. So now I have to do it again but add the different mesh. I will remove this, uh, the dress and put uh, buttons high. Everything is else the same. And this time I will bake just the button smash, not all textures. Okay, now we have baked all the textures. You can find them on the project. Ambient occlusion maps, right? Uh, curvature map and normal maps, as well as thickness and world maps. Let's now play with some materials. You can always create your own materials by literally taking a pre made one and messing. Let's start with the front one. And messing with the options which are under properties. This doesn't have much because it's I think it's just a color and the normal map like I will just bump them up or down. Yeah. Well, it has a color option as well. A little bit because the actual material is called concrete. So You can see the height, uh, height range and uh, AO tend to change the look of it a lot. Of course, like you want to lower it, you can use uh, like any map uh, as your starting point, but it's easier for you to start with some general general materials like fabric materials, which you also have pre-made a bunch of. You can add layers which are which will be empty or uh, colored ones. You can add uh, on usually on the empty ones you can draw with brush, but uh, with filled ones you can add uh, your either colors or just general options by sliding them, or you can use uh, some of these maps. You just drag them. Now I just want a, a color map, I want to add curvature map so I can overlay it but I don't want any of these other options. So now I have it, I edit it and I can set the layer just like you would do in Photoshop. If you want more you can just keep on adding. Let's add AO, wrong map. I don't want any of these other options again. And I will put this under multiply.
let's change some environments a little bit it's down here environments you can just drag and drop them this will be bring a little bit of color like they're actual maps like you can imagine them surrounding your mesh just like in max it's HD -R 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 <laughs> images or uh, this one you can see like it, this uh, shows like um, it will be light in the front but not in the back this will be light in both and this uh, are let me drag and drop it you can see on the outer rim that there is light unlike this one where there is both light in the inside and on the outer rims as well you can mess with some more options under here shader settings this one is good for um, um, uh, latex looks very really nice on latex let me just change the materials a bit there's also pre-made uh, latex material you can use Let me change the environment as well. This one. Alright. Looks nice. I like this one for um no, not this one, it's this one. Just kind of as an ambient occlusion map. I mean, you can also grab this ones, this pre uh, the project one maps, right? But I also would like to take out this map. Looks nice. Let's remove this and continue working with our general map. When you're happy with how the first map is looking, you can literally select all of them by pressing from top to the bottom one shift and going right click, click, selecting copy, and going onto each different UV map and pasting them. Substance will automatically use correct maps, cor correct curvature maps, and thickness maps on that. Uh, UV scale.
So now let's export these maps and into Photoshop and check how they look in um, Second Life. And let's uh, take, yeah, okay. Uh, let's take 2D view. This is uh, the file extension, right, that you want. I tend to always import and export it as PNG. The size, I'll put it 24. And uh, out, this is the options that you can. Uh, the, the 2D view option is literally the one that you see in this 2D window. That is the map that you will be exporting. So let's export them. And let's import them into. Um, Photoshop. Uh, scripts will file in the stack so they will be one on top of the other Now because my buttons are on this different map, let me just see where this finishes. Uh, I could just uh, download the wireframe, but I'll just do it like this. Let's check them out in Second Life. Local. Remove this. Take in my two maps. Okay, let's export the normal maps now. Let me put them also in stack. So I can glue together buttons and um, the main dress.
Okay, the rig is broken here, it doesn't matter, I wasn't, uh, I just wanted to import it. So I can mess with textures now. Okay, let's now mess a bit more with this texture, so it looks a little bit better, and let's create colors and patterns for it. Let's close this one. Change the image size so it's smaller and easier to manipulate. Mm, Audrey. I'll export a bit more of curvature map. I want to see, uh, I want to try overlaying it a bit more, see what I'll get. A lot of times it's like you just mess about. I really don't know uh, how you create a true um, bake like using this and that to get exactly what you need and want honestly most of the time I just mess about I mean I can I, I know what I have to do but I always like to try different materials different overlays and so just to see how it goes After all, you have all of this map, so it's always good to use them and try them and see how it goes. I actually don't know if I want this to be so look so rigid. Let me see with some colors. I'll just open. I have um, already a bunch of pre-made colors from my previous releases, so I'll just drag them here. Let me see one. Uh, this one. Most of, I tend to usually create a uh, red texture in substance, not black, not white, because I find it easier to manipulate with the with the colored version. Like you can just put a black and white on the color to make it mono, and use exposure to either make it white or make it black. But I find it harder going from white to black or from black to white, because you use you. you uh, lose some details either in the shadows or in the highlights so I tend to start with the color so let's see how white we can make this To get colored versions, I just leave the mono one and use uh, color balance options and just mess around 
still I'm kind of happy with the result. You can always save them and use that as options to have the same colors every time. But honestly, uh, depending on the model, depending, depending on the material, I tend to change them to what I think will look nice. As well, uh, I will be messing a bit more with those. But as well, I want to add some textures on it because I want it to be like a flowery dress. So let me see from my previous uh, releases what patterns I have. When it comes to like patterns, um, I advise buying them. Use stock footage. Uh, there's a, a bunch of sites at this moment that pr provide uh, really nice textures. It's better to have like uh, two, three good patterns, quality patterns, than to have a bunch of free ones that are rubbish. Let me open Yori again, actually. No, don't need to save this. I want Yori patterns. Where are you? Where are the patterns? Patterns. Patterns. No, I don't. Just the colors are here. the patterns mm -hmm. well, we cut them out we have the original never mind Let's see, put the white color and uh, multiply or linear burn are good ones for overlays, for patterns to put on top and it's good to put it, make a white color and use patterns on that. You can as well uh, copy uh, curvature maps on top of it because sometimes you you will lose uh, the quality of them they will because there's a lot of happening when you use patterns so you can always add a bit more layers on top of each other let me just resave this it's here that's Audrey one and second life will automatically uh, change that. I want to use the same map just to see how it looks as a specular map. Just for start, let me see. Let me add some more light.
Yeah, it looks nice with the patterns. So I'll be making a couple of solids and more patterns, I think. Because I want it to be like a spring dress. Um, I think it will be cute. But the material I created, it looks a little bit heavy, I'm not sure. Actually, I want to create, uh, I want to try a specular map just by adding noise. Instead of adding actual uh, reflection by using, if you if you want some latex option, you can just use under shyness, put on high, and it will interact with all the lights that are around. You know. But that's only if the lights are around you. And uh, I know a lot of people like they prefer the. Actually, I like the latex version one as well. I might actually make the latex version as well. <laughs> it actually looks cute. Uh, I know a lot of people use like Calvi, uh, Calvial wind lights that are actually really full bright. So using this shyness, I, I strongly advise you using all three slots when you are creating. Always export normal maps and create the shyness in some sort of way. At, at least uh, put the regular map there and put the and uh, add a bit of different color maybe if you if it's too white just put the specularity color down so that it doesn't show that it doesn't really change the, your material but like always use all three slots because second life has only those three slots for you to create and uh, it's always better and uh, when it comes to uh, I know a lot of people use like really light, full bright, full bright uh, wind lights. So and a lot of time, and some people don't even have a, advanced lighting turned on because you can't see the normal maps and specular maps unless your graphics are under advanced lighting t model turned on. But as a designer, I strongly advise you using all of those options that Second Life gives you. So I will be adding some more materials, uh, some more uh, textures to see how they look. Just messing about this one, I think this will look cute. Yeah. And for the actual specularity map, I want to try literal noise map. I have them from before, and this is how they look. I want to see how they will enter interact with this mesh. Tevers opens, right? There we go. It's just a noise map. You can create it like in two clicks. Like go to create a new folder, a new file, new image actually. Uh, not inches, but pixels. Okay. Let's set it to a thousand. Put black color around it, release it, and go under filter, noise, add noise, and you literally get it. And have some more options, like this is too much. You just want it to let be a little bit there. So when the light hits it. Gives the pattern a little bit more 
uh, how do I say, like, oomph. Makes it, look, makes it look a little bit better. Like, when I turn it to black, this is, right, what you see. So this by itself is actually too much. The specs are too big. Maybe the other one is smaller. I forgot. Let me see. No, this one will be, will be absolutely too much. But let's see. Right? This is too much. Once I'm done, I will create that later, but I just want to show a bit some, I don't know what more to show. Like after you're done, you can, of course, you save each pattern as its own and import it into Second Life, right? Um, including normal maps and uh, specularity map when you're done. And... Um, like, th that's pretty much it. You can uh, use um, Substance Painter as Photoshop. Like, there's a lot of options that you have. Honestly, for me, it's force of habit. I just tend to... A lot of times, I just crawl back into Photoshop. But the uh, Substance Painter has a million and one options. Uh, it's, you can paint on it right here on the 3D model. Just remember that uh, unless you're using uh, this filter... Filter? These two filters? The way you look, the way it looks really in uh, Substance Painter won't look in Second Life. Like you can, it's similar but right, not the same. So you'll have to, uh, you can as well push these patterns into Substance and use them, texture them here. Honestly, I, it find I find it easier to organize my files in Photoshop, and when I'm saving them. Although, although Substance also has layers, so I guess it's just a personal preference in the end. And yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty much pretty much pretty much it for the texturing part. Of course, the more options your item has, like you will either put it on the you can either put it as a face, like I did here, and glue them together later, or you can use like a black and white, white uh, a mask to show or hide some parts while you so you want to paint something red but you don't want uh, I want to add like something uh, something black oh so you want like something black or um, you want to um, unhide something <laughs> Let's like add layer and you can add a uh, white map and on, on the brush, you use a brush. So when you go with it, like it will show the bot up and the bottom layers, layers that are under it. Or you can inverse it. Okay, right here you won't see it, but it's... Um, it's, it's, it's uh, pretty much the same as in Photoshop. You can use as well these proced uh, procedurals and grunges to add them for to bump maps or to your height map. Let's use one of these layers that we have, and let's add the normal normal option. Uh, actually, no height option. You can literally drag it to get a different effect. Of course, this is some random, but uh, there's a little there's a one that I use a lot for like sweaters and so. This this ones. And just scale them down, so you get this like a tweed patterns or something like that. You can mess about and uh, see what you like. 
as well you can import your own they're just black and white maps you can just scale them down to get a different material of texture kind of uh, don't forget that what you see here in 2d you can export it into um, as a map just remember that this right I'm zooming in really much but the um, texture hasn't uh, changed in pixels of course in second life like you will it's a pre-made it's done texture it has a certain size which will be at most uh, 124 times 100 uh, thousand 24 so it will look a bit different so it's good uh, like you, you see it here really small but a lot of time you might have to make it a little bit bigger to have it seen in second life just mess about and see you can also play with your pre-made on normal maps to add a bit of option with these hard surfaces uh, these are some skin materials they're actually really nice uh, substance is really good if you want to paint on well it doesn't show on this of course but it's really nice uh, for texturing skin actually as well you have both materials and smart materials Materi um, on smart materials like you can add I think a bit more options than you have in smart materials you can use all of them and you can save all of them and uh, mess around with any of them and resave your likes what you uh, like more as a new material you can just uh, the way you save it you just select all of your maps go right click I forgot. Mm. Yeah, you have to put them in a fo folder. I forgot. Just put them in a folder all together and you can create smart material and it will be named as the folder so you can just change the name go right click and create smart material and there it is when you're exporting textures there's a lot of options that you have I tend to export 2d view and normal maps because some of these options are like for PBR, like you don't use PBR in Second Life, there's, you have what you have. So it's always, you have to, your 2D map, like your actual, this texture, has to have a bit more information than just uh, texture and, uh, sorry, there's a truck going by, I don't know if you heard it, never mind. But yeah, I guess at the end of the day, it just depends on what you like, what you want to achieve. But Substance is really good for texturing uh, clothes and uh, avatars. Uh, and it's good if you want to texture like um, uh, furniture and houses and so. Remember, it has ambient occlusion maps, but it doesn't have really shadow maps. You can't force a light to be sh shadowed. So it just has ambient occlusion map, like the rings, right, uh, of the shadows. So for that shadowing, uh, like, and light from the windows and such, you might, you'll need Max or Blender. And, um, yeah, I think that's it for this time. I don't know if you have any more questions, like, just uh, ask in the comments. I'll try to answer it. That's all. Happy creating!